Thank you so much for sticking around. We are moving on to another hot topic in the community right now, which is the proposed fish hatchery. Uh, downtown at Bruce Beach, west of the Community Maritime Park site. And Christian is kind enough to share his expertise with us about that as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. I know that um, you were a member of the URAC committee, which looked, tried to take a, a broad look at the future of downtown and what kind of vision we wanted to have in that. And while the committee didn't take a position on the hatchery project at the time, y'all did talk about it some. Um, what was the consensus yeah we, we didn't take a formal position we did discuss it and we had a lot of concerns about whether that was the best thing that needed to happen in that area there mm -hmm. um, our our URAC report our final report actually shows that that area of Bruce Beach more for passive recreation um, access to the water the idea being that in the future you're gonna have more intensive residential development around that and you Hopefully. need to do everything you can to maintain that open space and that access to the water and that was kind of our idea and that led you into some research about hatcheries um, all over the country and kind of what their, what their legacy and their impact is. So what can you share about what you've found out? Yeah, when this uh, project first came forward, I guess it was really June in 2011, mm -hmm. and um, I had a lot of concerns about it, but like anything, I thought, well, I've got to go out and make sure I'm as well informed as I can be. So um, myself, along with several others in the community who have some science background, started doing that. And um, it is absolutely amazing what I have found by looking into the, the experience with marine fish hatcheries and other communities. I think it's like anything. If you're gonna if you're gonna build something in your community, the logical thing is to say, well, where else have they done it, and did it work there or not? I mean, that's right. a pretty logical Absolutely. thing to do. So I've done that and looked at, at the hatcheries in, in the Pacific Northwest and in Alaska and California and Texas. These are all places that have been looked at that are doing something similar to what we're trying to do here with mm -hmm. our hatchery. And it is absolutely amazing the difference between the public's perception of the hatcheries, which everybody kind of thinks that they've been incredibly successful and they've had a huge hand in rebuilding fish populations in these areas, especially fish that are popular among uh, recreational fishermen. That's what sure. they've really been, been working toward. Um, so you have the public perception, which tends to be way up here. And then you actually start reading the scientific journal articles and the papers and the reports from scientists, which nobody really likes to read, but that is my background. So I, I can read that stuff and, um, and can actually digest it and understand it. And the difference between the two is night and day. You'll see newspaper articles and magazine articles touting the success of these programs. Mm -hmm. And then you'll read the science and the scientists will say, Either it's not working or we don't know if it's working, we can't tell if it's working, and this is after decades of it and tens of millions of dollars spent and hundreds of millions of fish released, they're still not really sure. And I think part of the reason is they, you, you run up against the basic rules of ecology. And like yeah. I say, like I you know, like to say, those are rules that they bend but they don't break. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there's some real fundamental issues out there that make me question the viability of what they're, we're talking about here locally. I know that some of the some of the science indicates that um, hatchery fish are not as healthy once released into the wild as the wild stock. They have genetic problems, and there have been problems with them being unable to mate with their wild counterparts, so that it artificially inflates the fish population. Yeah, um, it's been well documented for many, many decades that the 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 hatchery raised fish are less fit. They're less genetically uh, less fit. And in nature, see, nature always works toward making a better product. With, through evolution, it's always better, and those are the ones that pass on their genes. The hatchery kind of does the, the opposite, and so the fish tend to be less fit and less able to reproduce in the future. So you run into this bizarre thing where the more hatchery fish you put out there, the more you actually reduce the ability of the population at large to reproduce. So it's kind of the opposite of what happens in nature, and you really end up creating an inferior product, which is a very interesting problem. There have also been some questions about um, the location and if that is the best highest use of that property. Yeah, I think my, my confusion on this whole project is not a much about fish hatchery good or bad, it's process. It, it seems inconsistent at, at best. I know at the Y, and you know I had a dog in that hunt, um, in the Y um, on site eight, which was gonna have complete water access, pay a million dollars every 10 years into the, into the city, um, and create a lot of jobs, um, and pretty environmentally sound for one acre. Um, people wanted best use. They didn't want to put anything there that would hurt the future. We did studies. We hired a, uh, the city hired a real estate company. The mayor did to look into it. And they came out, and as you know, we're going to end up, um, the Y's going to be on another site. Yet this is now um, six acres, pretty much right across for one dollar, 
six acres, mm -hmm. probably limited waterfront access for eight to 12 jobs. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just a big believer that there should be a consistent process followed for, for all projects. And I caught my eye when the URAC was doing their study, because I heard from various members concern looking at all that study, all that brain power into what Bruce Beach should be used for. And it's like, that's just thrown out right now for a dollar, for six acres, for eight to 12 jobs. And I just found it inconsistent with what's happened across the street or across the bay. And I'm hearing that concern more and more around the community. It is hard for the average person to get a handle around the science and the things that I've looked into, mm -hmm. but it's a little easier, and I think that ultimately that may be the issue that, that decides it one way or the other in our community, at least for that spot. Is, is that the right space? What does that do to the larger dynamic of downtown? And are we following a deliberate process in the way we consider these, these issues? Because it really think is an industrial use, the fish hatchery. Yeah, and I think they're trying to make it a little less of that than it's been in the past and make it a little more of a public mm -hmm. access thing. I, I, I don't know truly right. how much it's going to be, but it is largely an industrial operation. Its intent is to produce fish more than it is any, any other th single thing. Yeah. Sure. So my, my question wasn't good or bad. I think the fish hatchery needs to be looked at. Mine is just one of cons inconsistency with process. And that's true. And, and, you know, the people are watching this sort of thing, and people want to see a consistent process applied so that they feel like everything gets a fair shake. And it's not that you, uh, you know, beat an issue to death or you discuss it un un unnecessarily, but everything deserves to be fully discussed yeah. and fully vetted. If you're going to do RFP for one piece of property, do it for other pieces of property. If you're going to assess it from a real estate perspective on one piece of property, then do the other piece of property. And then if it comes out that the best use is a fish hatchery, uh, you know, bless it and let's all get behind it. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think in the larger context of the BP monies that are coming to our area, um, this is the first of a, of a much, you know, many hundreds of millions of dollars that are coming. And so it's important to get it right. Everybody's watching. We're watching locally. The nation is watching. Can we trust the people of the Gulf Coast to, to get it right? You know, this money was supposed to go back to the federal government and Congress stepped in and said, no, we want most of those funds to go back to those Gulf Coast states. So people are watching and making sure that we can, um, that we can get it right and do it right. Well, the conversation that we're having today is part of what I think can help us get it right because we can't, uh, we can't come to the right solution unless we ask the right questions and we, we look into all the avenues. So um, if, thank you so much for coming and having a chat with us. If you hang on with us for just a minute, we're going to take a short break and be right back.